So we've talked about a couple of things that you can do with trees. So there's actually kind of two general reasons that we use trees in computer science. One reason is that there are data, there's data in the world that they're a really good fit for. Um, and so we could use them to model certain real world uh, data sets uh, or certain phenomena that uh, occur in nature. The other reason is that for certain algorithms, if we store data in a tree, those algorithms end up being able to work more efficiently or faster. We'll talk about both of these uses. But what we're talking about right now is kind of like what data in the world can we model nicely with a tree? Um, I've given you three examples here, right? So the one example that you know is probably ringing bells right away is the Java's object hierarchy. Java organizes classes into a tree. Um, you know, we've looked at this type of thing before where you know capital O object is the root node. It has no parent. Every other class in Java inherits from one node. If I don't use extends, I inherit from object. If I do use extends, I inherit from something else. But that class eventually inherits from object if I go all the way up. And so Java uses the relationship between classes and its hierarchy to do things like figure out you know, uh, how to find a particular method and stuff like that. So if you think about looking for a method in a class, I start on the class itself and then I walk back up the tree all the way to capital O object looking for that method. If I don't find it there, then you know I, I get an error. Um, so it turns out, and, and many of you now have a very interesting relationship with your computer, which is sort of a product of the modern age, which is that you don't really know where stuff is on your computer. That's cool, I get it. Um, but you know, someday you might want to find out. So it turns out that your computer actually organizes the files uh, that it stores on your disk drive into a tree. It's called the file system tree or the file system hierarchy. There's a root and then there are uh, you know, descendants. When you create a directory, what you're doing is you're actually creating you know, a, a new node in the tree that you can then put other things into, right? Um, the, so, so here's another fun example, right? Related to the internet, which we talked about a little bit recently. Um, we didn't talk as much about domain name translation, but um, the domain names that you use when you go to a website like cs125.cs.illinois.edu, those have a hierarchy to them. Um, it's interesting because the hierarchy is backwards. And actually, when you talk to Tim, uh, well, like I've t ever talked to Tim Berners-Lee in my life, uh, apparently uh, Tim Berners-Lee, uh, well, one of the uh, inventors of the World Wide Web, has said that maybe those addresses should have been the other direction, right? So it should have been edu.illinois.cs.cs125. Anyway, we're stuck with the way they are. Um, but the idea is that if you think about it, we're going from more specific to more general. So, you know, .cs125, that's a specific course in the CS department. .cs, it's a particular department within the University of Illinois. .illinois, that's a particular institution of higher education. .edu, that's one of what are called top-level domains that are administered um, by the, the people that administer the internet names and numbers. So, uh, and it turns out that that hierarchy also has to do with how the names are controlled. So if I want a new .edu, let's say I want to you know, get gua.edu, jeff.edu for my own private university, I've got to go talk to someone who manages that and that's probably some person somewhere and they're going to want documentation that I really have a university and stuff like that. If I just want to get you know, cs128.cs.illinois.edu or something like that, um, there's people kind of down the hall in the building where I used to work that you know, I know by name who can handle that? And so how the domains are administered is also done hierarchically. There's someone at the University of Illinois that, can, that controls all the you know, .illinois.edu domains, et cetera. So you know, three examples of places where trees are used in real world, quote unquote, some of these are computer uh, systems, because they, they have a good match with the underlying data. That's not always why we use trees. We also use trees in certain cases to store collections of items because algorithms certain efficient algorithms can run well on them. Um, but there are other places where trees end up matching up really well with real world data.